Well, good evening. Good evening. Let me welcome you tonight to our uh, annual uh, Good Friday, our Tenebrae service this evening. Um, thanks for coming out, even though it's a little cooler than you might have expected and a little wet and rainy, but uh, maybe that's fitting for the service tonight. Uh, as we come into this service, uh, just a few sort of words and of uh, again, instruction like we did last night. There's not much you'll be doing aside from singing along. And you'll notice the lights in this uh, sanctuary will get a little dimmer with each reading and with each extinguishing of the candle. And by the end of the service, the whole sanctuary will be dark. Um, the, I believe we're going to leave the foyer light on for if you need some guidance to come out. Uh, but if you have a hard time seeing, just let somebody know. We'll kind of help you quietly uh, leave the sanctuary this evening. So... Um, as we come into this time of worship, though, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, and giver of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we come this evening in this time of worship to remember, to remember the cross, to remember your love, to remember what you've done for us. And Lord, we come intentionally to pause here, to not rush too quickly to Sunday morning's empty tomb, but Lord, to be reminded that there is no resurrection without a crucifixion. There is no new life without death. And so tonight, Lord, as we remember your death and the price you paid and the love you showed, help us, Lord, to feel your presence among us and, Lord, to be encouraged, to be encouraged by your great love for us. We pray these things in the name of our crucified Lord. Jesus the Christ. Amen. John 15, 9 says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. He has a wonderful love for us. And we want to sing about that. It's hymn 513, a wonderful chorus. You can just remain seated. But I want you to sing this um, great hymn of the faith, all right? After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met him there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with the police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. 
Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of them whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. At this time during our service, we pause to pray for those who mourn. Over the last year, from last Easter to now, we've lost several in our family, in our friends, in our community, and even around the world. We pause on this evening to pray for them as we pray with those disciples who lost their friend on this same night. And so in just a moment, I ask you to join me in silent prayer. Perhaps there's someone in your own family, in your own circle, for whom your heart still mourns this evening. Feel free, even in that time of silence, to say their name aloud, and we will join you in prayer. <clears throat> then I'll close our time together with a word of prayer. So let us pray. Chase Burroughs, Martha Duncan. Green and Margie Thomas. Lord, you have heard our prayers. 
these names we mention, these names we keep too close to speak out loud. For tonight, as we mourn them, we also mourn your death. But Lord, even in that, we, we find a, a hope, a comfort. And knowing that when we die, when our friends, our loved ones die, they unite with you in their death. And that there is more to it than that. That there is hope. Hope on the other side and through death. That is what your cross tells us. That is what your love shows us. That is what your word and your presence bring us and a hope and peace beyond our understanding. So tonight, Lord, as our hearts mourn and grieve, we lift them and the names we've mentioned to you, trusting their souls in your care, and looking ever forward to that day when we will be reunited once again in resurrection, in love, in your kingdom. In your holy name we pray. Amen. John eighteen fifteen through 27. <clears throat> Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not one of the slaves of the high priest. A relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. replaced 
with such a Take heed as we read God's precious word. They took, then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter his headquarters so that they to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out and said to them, What accusations do you bring against this man? They answered, 
If this man were not a criminal, we would not hand him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated that, excuse me, the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered into his headquarters again, summoning, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom from this were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no cause or no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone to for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted in, in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. You join me as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. We'll be singing three stanzas of Were You There? We'll do the first one. It's 181. <coughs> Were You There? You can remain seated. Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priest and police saw him, they shouted, 
crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he claimed to be the son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered the headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus said, answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed him, me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you were no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out with him. Oh, they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Latin and in Greek. Then the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing, clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and, this, and the disciple whom he loved, Standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
John 19, 31 through 37. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was, that Sabbath was the day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers <coughs> pierced his side with a spear, and blood and water came out. He who saw this and has testified so that you may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. So they took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. 